What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In this week's video, we're going to talk about multi-outputs and how to export each multi-output track into its own individual audio track. So let's get right to it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our play engine be a multi-output play engine. And if you need a little bit more detail or more time to understand what multi-output is, I'm going to tag this video um, with the multi-output versus multi-timbral video I did a couple weeks back. And I'll go ahead and link that down in the description. So we're going to go ahead and go to the play and we're going to put multi-output and then we're gonna have the nine track stereo. So I'm gonna use African percussion to demonstrate this and I'm gonna make five tracks with five different um, instruments and then we're going to print it into an audio track. That way it's easier for mixing and you don't need to have your computer processing the MIDI information as you're um, playing back the instruments. And also another thing that with multi-output is that you can't really do any EQing or processing on any of the tracks except for the master track up here. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go and open up five tracks here from the multi-output section. And I'm going to create these um, four tracks into the main um, screen here. Because if you don't do that, then you can't play... Um, any of the other instruments while you're recording in MIDI. So the first instrument I'm going to put in here is going to be a Frontom, uh, Djembe, uh, oh wait, I need to hit add. So we're going to do Frontom, Djembe, that I think it's pronounced Iwi or Ewi drum. Um, and then we're going to do the Udu and then this African metal, which is essentially a shaker. And now I'm going to output each of these into its own separate um, track. So that way now when track number one is highlighted, the front tom will play, so let's take a listen. Then we have the djembe, the ewi, the udu, And then the African metals, which is also um, shakers. So let's just go ahead and name this just because. So this is djembe. This one is the. And then the udu. And then let's just call this shakers. Cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and build my track. And then we can go and see the process on how we print this onto audio tracks. All right, so a basic percussion groove, nothing too crazy. Now we're gonna go ahead and see how we route this out to make it, um, to turn it into audio tracks. That way we can get into mixing. Cause also another downside of multi outputs is that if you try to do any processing on any of these tracks here, then um, you won't get the results because it's all outputted to one channel and that's the main channel, right? The one that has the play instance so up here. So we need to export them anyways to an audio track. That way we can properly mix it and then create our mix down and then of course send it to our mastering engineer or master it yourself on a separate project. So let's go ahead and open up our five audio tracks here. So option command A is the shortcut for audio tracks in Logic. And we're gonna go ahead and name this because that should be the first thing you should do to keep everything organized All right in shakers All right so here we have our five instruments and that is exactly what we have up here now let's go ahead and do the routing so because this is a multi output and only one track outputs the instrument so again if i play it you only see the first track here outputting meaning 
that this is the main track that's going to output the rest of the tracks. You can't make this a separate bus and make this a separate bus and make this a separate bus because you just won't get the results. These tracks don't output. They're just MIDI information. Everything gets fed to the first one. So what we need to worry about is making this one right here. We're going to bus the output, right? I'm not putting it on a send. I'm putting it on an output. It's going to create an aux track, but we don't really need it. So I'm going to delete it. But you only output the main track. So let's say you have multiple instances of mul of multi output instruments. You only use the one that has the instrument, um, the sample library loaded onto it, because that's what's going to output the rest. The way we go ahead and do this is we do it one by one, right? And it's good that we do it this way. That way we can make sure that all the MIDI information is saved. Let's go ahead and this is bus one. We're going to route this output to the input of the audio track. So we need to make sure that bus one is the input of this. And I'm going to go ahead and do this for all these tracks over here. Because now we want to make sure that we print the right instrument in the right track. So this is how we do it. We're going to go ahead and mute these four tracks. And the way we mute the tracks is not by pressing mute here, because if you do that, you're still going to hear the instrument. You need to actually mute the MIDI track itself. So you're going to highlight these tracks here, right click, go to where it says playback, and then hit mute on off. The shortcut for that is control M. So we need to actually shut off these MIDI tracks, because if not, if you just mute it, then you're still going to hear it. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and start with our front tom and we're going to go and input monitoring on. If you turn this off, then you won't hear it, but you'll see the waveforms being created. So here is the front tom. Okay, now we're moving on to the djembe, and again, we need to make sure that we control M, mute it, and unmute the djembe. So here goes. We're going to do the ewi, or ewi. If I pronounce it wrong, please let me know if you know the right pronunciation. And here it goes. Awesome. We're going to do the Udu now. So again, we have to mute, unmute the Udu, and then record. And last but not least, we're going to do our shakers, which is the African metal. And mute the Udu here. Here it goes. Awesome. So another thing I like to keep um, in mind, or make sure you guys keep in mind, is when you export or print these audio tracks into, um, I'm sorry, these MIDI tracks into audio tracks, record it in stereo. Do it in stereo. Why? Because some of these sample libraries record uh, in really big rooms and have really nice, you know, concert halls or, you know, scoring stages or, you know, studio rooms. And you want to make sure that you capture the entire stereo field of that performance. And if you want, then you can go ahead and pan left and right. But I recommend doing it in stereo, all of your sample library work. Um, don't do it in mono because then you're going to lose some of the um, room sounds. You're going to lose some of the, the nuances that come with the sample libraries already preset. So make sure you record them in stereo. All right, so here we have all our tracks printed. This is... The best way we could do it, that way we can do our extra you know, processing that we want to do because, again, you can't do any processing here because 
everything is being outputted to one channel here. So we need to do it one by one. And as you can see, it can be tedious, but it's definitely rewarding because now you can go ahead and just hear, you know, the frontom. You can hear just the djembe. And everything is outputted to its own separate channel. So you can go ahead and do all of your mix busing. You can do your aux tracks. You could treat this as if it was just a normal MIDI channel. Um, I'm sorry, a normal audio track. So another thing that we could do just to save some CPU here, because again, CPU is super, super essential um, to music production and to make sure that your project runs smoothly, is you can go ahead and turn your MIDI tracks off, right? Um, and the way we do it is we could right click and do track, track header components and then go where it says on off, right? You can go ahead and if you have it unselected, select it, or you could just do option M that will go ahead and turn off your track. So what you could do is just for safety, even though these aren't any, you know, they don't hold any sample libraries, just the first one, but just for safety, um, you can go ahead and just turn off the track and that way you can save some CPU because it offloads the sample library until you turn it on. Um, it offloads it. That way you can free up some CPU power and do more mixing, have more plugins in there. So that's a great way to save some resources. If you have any questions, please drop your comments down below. Again, I will link in the description the video to multi-output and multi timbral um, instrument and how to use them. Um, that way, in case you were a little bit confused on how I did the multi-outputs, um, you can go ahead and check out that video where I explain more in depth on how to do it and what what purpose it serves versus multi timbral If you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll catch you guys later.